Hello there, my dears. I surely am glad you're back for lesson 132. I loose the world from all I thought it was. And then it jumps right in. What keeps the world in chains but your beliefs? And what can save the world except yourself? Remember, thoughts and things are the same thing. Belief is powerful indeed. The thoughts we hold are mighty and illusions, that's what we're living in, are as strong in their effects as is the truth. Illusions are not creative, but the power of our thought to make things seem real is amazing. In other words, when people hallucinate, it looks exactly as if they were here. Same with us. A madman thinks the world he sees is real and doesn't doubt it. That would be us. We don't doubt that this world is real, and yet we keep being told, nope, it's not. You're dreaming all this up. Nor can we be swayed by questioning his thoughts' effects. It's only when the source is raised to question that the hope of freedom comes to us. In other words, the source of all our thoughts and beliefs are either fear or love. Those are the two main categories. Fear being simply the absence of love. Yet it says salvation, or coming to our own senses, is easily achieved, for anybody is free to change his mind, and once we change our minds, all the thoughts change with it. Now the source of thought has shifted, obviously from fear to love, if those are our two categories, because changing the mind means you've changed the source. Those are the only two sources. Change the source of everything you think, every thought you already have thought or yet will think. We free the past from what we thought before. We free the future from all these old, ancient, fearful thoughts of seeking what we do not want to find because the things that are related to fear we don't like. The present now becomes the only time. I don't really like to think of it as time because it's opposite to time. The present now remains the only experience. So here in this moment, let's just call it a present moment, but don't see that as a little slice of time. But in this present moment, this world can be free because we can let the past be lifted, release the future from our ancient fears, we find escape and give it to the world. This is a big statement. We have enslaved the world with our fears, our doubts, our miseries, our pain and tears, and all of our sorrows. And we have kept the world a prisoner to these fear-driven beliefs, to our judgments, our opinions, our conflicts, our egocentricity. Death strikes it everywhere because we hold these bitter thoughts of death or separation within our minds. Then it says the world is nothing in itself. It's a bunch of forms, but the mind must give these forms meaning. And what we behold upon it are our wishes, acted out so you can look on them and think them real. Now, perhaps you think you didn't make this world, but came unwillingly to what was made already, hardly waiting for your thoughts to give it meaning. Now, star this in your book. Yet, in truth, you found exactly what you were looking for when you came. This should once and for all answer the questions about my early childhood did it to me. When we speak about our early childhood, we refer to it from the world's point of view wherein all of our wiring and so on that happened is an accurate statement. But this statement is being made from outside the world, where it says, obviously, reincarnationally, if that's a word, that the second we show up in time and space, all of our beliefs create the kind of experience that our thoughts inevitably are going to bring to pass. So then it continues, there's not a world apart from what you wish, and herein lies your ultimate release. You just change your mind on what you want to see, and all your world has to change accordingly. Ideas do not leave their source. 
This idea is often stated in the text, and it has to be borne in mind if this is going to make any sense today. It is not pride which tells you that you made the world you see and that it changes as you change your mind. In other words, you're not being arrogant to take on that idea, but it is arrogant and prideful to argue that you came into a world separate from yourself, impervious to what you think, and totally apart from what you chance to be thinking about. And then it makes another big statement in this lesson that is worth starring or underlining. There is no world. What? (laughs) There is no world? This is the central thought the Course attempts to teach. This is pure quantum physics that says reality doesn't have any shape, form, or anything else. We create that in our minds. Wow, does that sound familiar? Now, not everyone is ready to accept this, and everybody has to just go as far as he can in being led along this road to truth. And it promises we will return and we'll go still further, or perhaps we'll step back a little and then make another stab at it. (laughs) We'll return again. But healing is the gift of any of us who are prepared to learn there's not a world and can accept this lesson now. Readiness will bring the lesson to us in some form that we can understand and recognize. You will have an experience. This is not a bunch of stuff to learn. You will have the experience. Some see it suddenly on point of death and rise to teach about it. We all probably have heard about that. Others find it an experience that is not of this world, mystical experiences, which show that the world does not exist because now what you're experiencing must be the truth and it's a total contradiction to this world. Once you have had some experiences that contradict this world, then all of this is just as plain as day. And some will find it in this course and in these exercises. We trust that will be all of us since we're drawn to this. So today's idea is true because the world does not exist. The world that we're seeing of a bunch of separate stuff. And if it is indeed our own imagining, then we can loose it from all of these things that we're thinking now because we can think something else. We can change the thoughts that are giving rise to these appearances, to these hallucinations about all the things that you don't like in life. The sick are healed as we let go ideas of sickness. And the dead arise when you let thoughts of life replace all of the thoughts you ever held of death. Now see, guilt, fear, separation are all death-related thoughts. Now, an earlier lesson has to be stressed again because it contains the firm foundation. This should be old news now, and that is you are as God created you. There's no place where you can literally actually suffer, no time that can bring a change to your eternal loving state. How can a world of time and place exist if you remain as love created you, because that's infinite, eternal, only loving, only safe, only brilliant, only light. So a world like this is totally antithetical to this truth of us. So what is the lesson for today, except a way of saying that to know yourself, to know this truth about you, saves the world? To free the world from every kind of pain, and there sure is a lot, is to change your mind about yourself. You are not small, awful, unimportant, guilt-ridden, etc., etc. Those are terribly, terribly awful thoughts, and not a one of them are true. Listen to that. None of these things you think about yourself are true. We've all gone crazy. There is no world apart from our ideas because ideas don't leave their source. And we maintain the world within our minds in thought. More quantum physics. Yet, and here's the key, if we're as God created us, which is absolutely so, we can't think apart from him. We can't think apart from our creator nor can we make something that does not share timelessness and love. In other words, we can't create unlike ourselves. And our timelessness and love inherent in the world we see? 
Does it seem to create the same way? If it doesn't, it's not real, and it just can't even be a hallucination. If you are real, which obviously you are, the world is a false statement about us. For God's creation is unlike this world of separation that seems to be our daily world in every way. And as it was by his thought you were created, so it is your thoughts which made it and must set it free. In other words, over and over, it says everything you see is a product of your thinking. And then it says, release the world. Now here I want you to try not to understand because that will make you crazy. Remember, this is not a book that you try to understand. It's information that leads you in a practice. And as you practice, the understanding will come. So here's this statement. Your real creations wait for this release to give you fatherhood, not in illusions, but as God in truth. Okay, occasionally in the text it refers to creations and nowhere ever does it give you any explanation of what it's talking about. But you can infer that if we are a creation, an extension of love, that's how we got here and what we are, then our real creations are the results of all our own loving thoughts, our own brilliant thoughts, our own light-filled thoughts. And just as, shall we say, the Creator is the Father of us, as we continue the lineage, we are the Father of what's created with our loving thoughts, and on and on and on. God shares His fatherhood with us. In other words, we have the same ability to create that He used in creating us. For there are no distinctions in what is Himself, that would be Creator, and what is still Himself, which would be us. Now here's another big statement to underline or star. What He creates is not apart from Him. And nowhere does the Father end and the Son begin as something separate from Himself. It really says from Him, but the rhythm of the sentence isn't right, so I have to turn Him into Himself. <laughs> So now it says there's not a world because it is a thought, an unloving thought apart from the creator of love. And it was made to separate the father and the son. Oh dear, this was not a good idea. And to break away a part of God himself and destroy wholeness. I think we were on a real tear when we thought this was a good idea. <laughs> Happily, we were unable to succeed. So can a world which comes from this separatist idea be real? Can it be anywhere? No. So deny illusions, but accept the truth. You're not pushing against illusions. You're just saying these can't be. I don't have to pay any attention to them. Just deny that you are a shadow, a little, small, unimportant nothing, briefly laid upon a dying world. Release your mind from all this guilt, all this judgment, all these opinions, all of this, I've got to have my way in order to be safe. And you will look upon a world released. So today, our purpose is to free the world from all of these idle thoughts. Like, what would it be like if I were separate? That we ever held about it and about all the other living things we see. They can't be here and we can't either. <laughs> we're at home asleep, dreaming, this is a really bad dream we're having. And we who are, as He created us, want to loose this world this day from all of our illusions, from all of our dreams, from all of our confusion, that we can finally be free. We are now currently imprisoned with our frightening thoughts. So now we're going to have two 15-minute periods and this is how we're going to begin. I who remain as God created me, as love created me, would loose this world from all that I thought it was. I don't want to be right about this anymore. I am real because a world of separation is not. And I sure do want to know my own reality. Remember, 
This is not to try to understand, like, how can it be that this lamp that I'm looking at is not real? That's not a place you want to go. What you want to do is stick with the source of what we see, because remember, thoughts and things are the same thing. So as always, we want to trade in all of our small, fearful opinions and judgments and guilt for the truth of us, which is we're still beautiful, pure, good, united. That's the truth. So once we say these words, we're going to rest, alert, no strain, and just allow our minds to be quiet. And as they're quiet, to be changed, to allow different thoughts to come in so that the world can be freed along with you. And it says you don't have to realize that healing comes to all kinds of people across the world when you do this. Ones you see nearby, ones across the world, you will sense your own release. But you may not understand as yet that you can never be released alone. Every time you let go of fearful, guilt-ridden thoughts, others are released as well because we are really all one. So throughout this day, increase the freedom sent through your ideas to all the world because your ideas are going to get better and better. And say, whenever you're tempted to deny the power of changing your mind, simply say to yourself, I loose the world from all I thought it was, and I choose my own reality instead. I choose to think lovingly and inclusively and recognize right here this moment, it's an entirely different ball game. Such important lessons. Well, of course, they all are. They're all part of a very important kind of calculated overview wholeness to move us to our own place of freedom. So do practice with diligence today, and I'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Okay, bye.